Hi everybody! Today we're going to broadcast from the Hurdy Gurdy shop. I'm actually at my main workbench out here, so pardon the dust. Today we're going to demonstrate how to do a quick finish repair. I'm George Leverett. Welcome to Hurdy Gurdy World. Doug B. from Michigan recently wrote to us, Hey George, I've got something going on in the back of my instrument. There's some sticky residue or something going on with the finish. Can you give me any advice on how to fix it? And that's what we'll do today. The best tool you can have when doing anything on a finish is light. Good light, meaning a light that rakes across the damaged area. In this case, you see I've got something going on right here. You can see that little line. Uh, this light that you see a reflection of is a fluorescent light overhead. The easiest and quickest thing we're going to talk about first is simply to try to clean it off with a, a rag dampened with warm water. A lot of times if you have a residue on an instrument, that'll take care of it. Okay, I'm not having any luck with that. Let me re-moisten my paper towel here. And... Alright, as you can see, not having much luck. I still have still have the light going right across there uh, and it reveals the mark. Um, the next step I would use depending on the finish so maybe don't try this at home is I'll go over it with alcohol and see if that removes it. However alcohol isn't friendly to all finishes. If you have a shellac finish on your instrument for instance that could actually make a bigger mess. So I'm going to skip that here even though this is a lacquer finish um, I'm just going to go to bigger guns right away. I'm going to use a couple of tools here. I have sandpaper. You see I have two different kinds. I'll talk about that in a minute. Buffing compound, uh, which I'll discuss also. And some rags. Let's start with the rags. I got this bag of rags at my local thrift store for like two bucks, which, does all, which I use in the wood shop for all these kinds of things. Polishing finishes and whatnot. Caution. One time we found an old pair of underwear in one of these rag bags. Not as awesome as it sounds. Anyway, so buyer beware on that. Sandpaper. Uh, in this case, we're going to actually sand the finish. So we want a really fine grit. If you don't know what that means, that means a higher number. The higher number of sandpaper, the finer it is. The lower the number, the more coarse it is. For today's demo, I'm going to use some 1500 grit, as in 1,500, and then some 2,500 grit. You can get the, the stuff at an auto parts store. You see I've got 1,500 grit, grit here. Uh, this gray, blackish gray paper is actually wet sand paper. Why do they call it that? It's designed to be used with water. Why do you need to use water? When you sand a finish, it clogs up sandpaper pretty quick. You see it's already forming little deposits here. If I go much further, I will get little corns of finish. Uh, you see them start to form these little micro white dots. They'll get bigger and bigger. And the little corns of finish that uh, form on the sandpaper can actually cause scratches on the instrument finish. So the more you sand, you'll hit a point where it actually starts to get worse than better. So that's what's going on, little hardened bits of finish. So the wet sand thing comes in where you, this paper is designed where when these corns of finish start to form, you can dunk it in water and wash them off and then keep going with your sandpaper kind of refreshed. Uh, I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to use 1500 and 2500 grit sandpaper. The only difference between this and the stuff you get at auto parts store is this is made by a luthier supply house and it's got a lubricant uh, built into the sandpaper to slough off the finish. It's not perfect. It wears out too after a while, but for the purposes of today's demo, it'll save me a little time not having to worry about water and washing out the sandpaper. Final component, buffing compound. Uh, this is stuff I got at the hardware, or excuse me, the auto supply store, some uh, Meguiar's swirl remover. I'll show you how all this stuff comes into play. Let's get started. All right, we're back to our finish repair. I don't know if you can see it from here. I have the line going right across the finish. Try to reveal it. 
Not only that, plus a little cloudy spot from where I just sanded. So we're going to clean all that up. And if this isn't coming out very clear, I'm going to do this to another spot on, on this instrument as well. So you'll get two chances to look at it. Uh, pretty easy. I'm going to start with some 1500 grit sandpaper. Uh, with sandpaper, if you want to keep the finish nice and level, you can wrap it around a block of wood. This actual sandpaper is sticky on one side, so I can just put it on a little block here and use the block. Uh, anyway, I'll just sand it till the line disappears. If you have residue on your finish, then just go till the residue disappears. The thing you want to avoid is working too heavy in one area. Uh, you could go through the finish. If you're careful, you'll be fine. Um, it's possible to overwork an area. I'm keeping a pretty light touch. This isn't great for all scratches. If a scratch is so deep that it goes actually through the finish, well, that's a different thing. So if you don't have results in like a minute and a half or something, you might want to lay off of that. Now I'm going to follow it up with some 2500 grit. So I'm going to a next finer grit just to uh, smooth it out a little bit and remove the sanding scratches from the other grit. Uh, my line has disappeared. However, I have a big dull spot in the finish. There's still finish here. It's just dull. So now we're going to shine it back up with some buffing compound. I'm going to take a rag from my rag bag, charge it with compound, which means I'm going to squirt some liquid on it. Now I mentioned swirl remover, just like sandpaper, compounds come in different grades too, uh, of different coarseness. So the swirl remover is a pretty fine coarseness. I'm not really pressing down too hard. Just uh, letting the compound do the work. And if I, I don't know really how I'm doing with it, so I'll just take a dry corner and wipe off the little compound here, the liquid that's still on here and see how my finish is looking. Uh, I see it's starting to shine back up. Still got a dull spot so I'll go back to it. Part of the rag that's still charged with compound. Rub that in a little bit. This is uh, actually a pretty easy thing to do. So. And like magic, the shine is coming back. And that is how you do a finish repair. I see a few little cloudy spots here. Uh, I'm catching the light with my own eyes a little differently than the camera is, so I'm kind of working to that. And there we go. Got it shined back up so it's consistent with the rest of the instrument. Here we are at another part of the back of the same instrument. I have a little line going across here. Hopefully you can see it cutting through the light. I'm going to clean that up too. Again, uh, start with a damp rag. Sometimes you'll get lucky. You know, you can wipe it right off. But in this case it didn't work. So I'm going to start with my 1500 grit sandpaper. Lightly sand it until it goes away. And I'm still seeing a little line through here. Right now, to me, the line looks like a little shiny line in a dull spot. Dull because I've sanded the finish. All right. There we go. Now we have a nice, even, dull sheen. I'm going to follow that with some 2500 grit. Just to clean it up a little more. Get it closer to a good surface for buffing. So I'll save myself some work with buffing by using finer sandpapers. I 
All right, and finally, now we have this dull spot. I'm going to take my buffing compound just like I did before, put some on a rag, and just kind of buff it in there. All right, I think we're uh, about got this wrapped up. One final note when doing your final buffing, um, it can help be helpful to go with the grain just in case you are getting any micro scratches in the finish. Then uh, buffing with the grain will help conceal that. Anyway, there you go. That's how we do it in the shop. A little elbow grease and uh, get the instrument shined back up in no time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.